In the world of Adventure Time, sadness, madness, and magic seem to be in some sort of triangular balance. The sadder you are, the more access you have to magic, but at the same time, the more magic you have or use, the more mad you get, which in turn can cause you to be more sad. This of course works the other way around as well. The madder you are, the more access you have to magic, which causes more sadness since it will probably drive away people you love. In Adventure Time, the best example of this triangular magic balance is the Ice King, aka Simon Petrikov. To understand the Ice King, we need a little bit of recap, and by little I mean it's going to take a while. It's not that Simon's story is exceptionally long, it just is a bit complicated. <laughs> uh, Gunter, please. You know, I'm recording here. Anyways, Simon Petrikov was an archaeologist, to me more specific, an antiquarian, and those are the people that research ancient artifacts, by the way. He at some point acquired an old crown from a Norwegian trader, and unbeknownst to him, this one had actual magical properties. It turns out this crown was created a long time ago by the ice elemental called Evergreen to stop a comet hitting Earth. Throughout history, there were always five elemental forces, ice, fire, candy, slime, and lump, the anti-elemental. These elemental forces forces always had an avatar, and Evergreen was the ice elemental when a cosmic comet was about to hit Earth. While the other elementals were contempt with the comet hitting Earth since they would reincarnate, Evergreen was not that happy with that, and so he froze the other elementals and set out to make a wish granting crown. While on his journey to find the pieces for the crown, he brought along Gunther, his stolen genetically modified dinosaur that he treats like shit. After making the crown, Evergreen is impaired, and unable to get the crown, he commands Gunther to stop the comet, but unfortunately Unfortunately, all Gunther wished for was to be like his master Evergreen, and so the comet hits Earth and the crown is from then on a cursed item. Whoever would wear the crown should become some version of Evergreen consumed by the deepest desire. The most prominent example of course being the Ice King. So in Simon's case, his deepest desire was to be together with his fiance that he lovably called Princess. Unfortunately, once he wore the crown, he began to descend into madness, which seemingly drove Betty away. What actually happened is that Betty uh, traveled to the future, leaving Simon for Simon to save Simon from the cursed ice crown, but we'll talk about th those events later on. Shortly after these events, the Mushroom War started, which was this kind of world-ending event that killed the majority of life on Earth. Honestly, it's not that important. With the help of a crown, Simon of course survives this world-ending event and finds himself in a post-apocalyptic Earth. In this wasteland, Simon met a little girl called Marceline and felt the need to protect her. Unfortunately, the crown was still driving him insane, and since Simon is a normal human, he needed the powers of the crown to protect Marceline. Eventually, the crown would take over Simon, only leaving him behind his deepest desire to be together with his princess, Betty. The crown, of course, twisted this desire to mean that he just wanted to marry princesses, and since in Ooh there are quite a lot of them around, it kind of became his hobby to kidnap princesses and try to forcibly marry them. There's even an episode where the Ice King uses a curse ring to force a princess to marry him, which actually leads Ice King to marry Jake for a few seconds. It was hilarious. You should have been there. Anyways, Simon and the Ice King seem to be two separate entities to a certain extent, but that will depend on how you interpret the story. So the first crown bearer, Gunther, wished to become like Master Evergreen. So, the crown seems to have a baseline personality with its own desires and wishes. The most prevalent among them being of course to have friends and not to be alone. Throughout the series there are many episodes and moments that show exactly that. The best example here might actually be the episode The Ice, where Ice King disguises himself as a horse and stalks Finn and Jake to find out why they're always so happy. Of course, stalking is not the best way to find friends, neither is a good way to be happy. Don't get me wrong though, in these first few seasons, IK is pretty unhinged. Not counting the pilot, in the very first episode where the Ice King appears, he has kidnapped several princesses and holds them against their will for weeks on end in a prison. This might also be the princesses exaggerating, but still, he did kidnap them. One thing though that is consistent throughout the show is that IK is really easily defeated, be it through his own ineptitude or just because he is simply too easy to fool. In the show, he actually gets called a lesser villain. No way! 
This proves he's a super villain, more powerful than lesser villains like the Ice King. Another reason why IK is so easily defeated is because he simply can't concentrate on one thing. He might have an overall goal or plan in mind, but getting there is difficult and might be completely by accident. For example, in the episode King's Ransom, Gunther has been kidnapped and IK concludes that Finn and Jake have kidnapped Gunther, which of course they haven't. He attacks them and after they agree on helping him, IK just tells them that He's not anywhere near that ransom note. Did you just say ransom note? Yeah, what? You guys act like you ain't never heard of no ransom note before. It's almost like IK has only a small grasp on logical thought and is more driven by his emotions. Nevertheless, sometimes it does seem like IK cares about certain people, though he calls those people Gunther as well. Likely the result of Gunther wanting to be Evergreen and wanting Evergreen to actually like him. Also, the Ice King himself seems to often dream of the event that led up to Gunther transforming into Evergreen and trust me, that's not a good experience. Another reason why IK is so out of it might as well be because he has wizard eyes which allow him to look into the astral plane. In the Adventure Time world, there's a parallel dimension kind of thing called the astral plane that can only interact with baseline reality to a certain extent. IK sees this parallel dimension and the baseline reality at the same time, all the time. He's unable to interact with it but he can still see it. Now imagine having to see these creatures a day in and day out without being able to touch them. I think this would drive anyone insane, and it does. Ice King even tried once to trap Finn on the astral plane to have him as a friend forever, which of course is fucked up. The fact that he's alone, sad and insane doesn't justify the fact that he tried to trap Finn for eternity, but it does explain why he did it. Kinda. A little bit. Actually, not really. In this particular episode, there is a weird dialogue about life, which I would like to show you in full. What do you think, Finn? Can we pull back the veil of static and reach into the source of all being? Behind this curtain of patterns, this random pattern generator. So clever, right here in every home, watching us from a one-sided mirror. Well, was I again? Well, the more you observe the Ice King, the sadder the story actually gets. Yes, the Ice King is insane, there's no way around that. But it is in moments of clarity where we see a person trapped behind this mania. From his first appearance we see that he just wants to connect with someone. The entire reason why he kidnapped so many princes is that he thinks You don't understand! I collect princesses because I want to marry one! Well why'd you capture six of them if you just want to marry one? I'm collecting them all first to be sure I make the right choice. You're both too young to understand, but marriage is a serious thing and lasts forever. You can't just rush into it, you know? It still doesn't justify, but it hints towards the underlying reason why the Ice King does things. Almost every other episode about the Ice King continues this trend of the Ice King trying to connect with people, but doing so in the worst possible way. Even when he has the chance to connect with people, his behavior gets kind of in the way. In the episode Loyalty to the King, for example, Ice King shaves his beard off, I know, not my best look, and is mistaken by all the princesses to be the nice king. A lot of princesses fall for him to the point that they allow themselves to be captured willingly. Unfortunately, the Ice King can't really hold back the darker parts of his personality and so he breaks the heart of several princesses and goes so far to order Finn, who kind of became his knight for a short period, to get rid of Lumpy Space Princess. At the end of the day, the Ice King is defeated by Finn and Jake and everything returns back to normal. Even in cases where Ice King seemingly succeeds, his own creations seem to turn against him. In the episode Princess Monster Wife, Ice King steals all the favorite parts of all the princesses he likes and creates a new creature which he promptly marries. Monster Princess is so hideous to the population of Ooh, rude by the way, that they can barely stay awake once they see the princess's face. While Ice King does seem to generally not care about looks, it becomes more and more apparent with time that Monster Princess is unhappy with her own looks. IK even tries to cheer up, but not even that can save the day, and so Monster Princess puts all the parts back where they belong, basically committing suicide. For those who call Adventure Time a kid show, I don't know what the fuck you're watching. After all of this, you might think that IK is sad about Monster Princess being gone, but the actual thing he cares about is that Monster Princess gave away the parts he stole. 
it should be pretty clear that what the Ice King did here is pretty bad. And sure, he might be partially insane, but even for Ice King standards, stealing parts of people goes a step too far. The more interesting part about this whole story is that the thing he creates is so self-aware that the problem solves itself. In a very dark way, but you know, it does. The Ice King himself, while he does some seriously fucked up things, kinda does have some morals. For example, he doesn't want to actually kill anyone, even though he might be responsible for a few deaths here and there. Finn, get rid of her. And sometimes he just threatens people with death. But, but you know, at least he did not commit genocide. See? Not that bad, right? Also, when Princess Bubblegum turns 13, he just says this. Oh, dang it! Well, I'm out of here. Goodbye, everyone. Again, kidnapping princesses is still bad, but at least he did not have a highly inappropriate relationship with a teenager while being a thousand years old. If you don't get those references, I would highly recommend watching my PB video. And while you're at it, subscribe, like, comment, give me money on Patreon or else. You know, the Ice King can be actually quite heroic at times. There was, for example, this one situation where he throws himself onto a wand going haywire to save Finn and Jake, similar to how soldiers throw themselves onto live grenades, so I assume he cares at least a little bit about his friends. Later on, when the Ice King starts to become more integrated into the friend group, Jake even acknowledges that the Ice King is semi-reformed. Okay, Jake. A bit harsh, innit? For a literal criminal? I am onto you, Jake. I know exactly what you did. Actually, throughout the story, the Ice King goes from this lesser villain to more of a gullible old man, which still holds a massive amount of power, of course. Even PB takes advantage of him, specifically in the episode The Cooler, where he cools down the temperature of the volcano in the Fire Kingdom, making him actually responsible for the death of one of the fire citizens, but it was PB that commanded him to do it, so... Who is really at fault here? In fact, the idea of Ice King having some sort of mental problem is often brought up and in no other episode does it become more clear than in I Remember You. In this episode, the Ice King is again just losing his marbles and is singing songs that presumably he heard from Marceline. Not happy with this whole situation, he actually takes his drums and travels to where Marceline lives. Marceline doesn't feel threatened by the Ice King, instead she's annoyed with him more than anything else. Over the course of the episode, we find out that this has been happening for over a thousand years. Ever since Simon lost his mind, Marceline has been leaving the Ice King, but over and over he finds her again. Marceline thinks that every time the Ice King finally finds her, he remembers who he is, but of course, I don't. <laughs> I mean, why should I? I can zap motherfuckers with ice. I will never go back. Who the fuck wants to go back to being a fucking human? The reality is that Simon was weak. He could barely protect little girl. He needed the powers of the crown to defend her. So who saved Marceline at the end? The cold ice of the crown. Simon is fucking nuts. Uh, oh my head. Goons. Goons. I. I. Can I get some, can I get some water? Fuck. Nah. There was again. Oh yeah, talking about Marceline, right? So, at Marceline's house, we finally find out that Simon has uh, left his final message to Marceline. And uh, I cannot do the song justice, and neither can I sing, but I will try my best. <clears throat> Marceline. It's just you and me in the wreckage of the world That must be so confusing for a little girl And I know you're gonna need me here with you But I'm losing myself and I'm afraid I'm gonna lose me too This magic keeps me alive But it's making me crazy I need to save you But it's gonna save me Please forgive me for whatever I do when I don't remember you. Please forgive me whatever I do when I don't remember you. Marceline, 
I can feel myself slipping away I can remember what it made me say But I remember that I saw you frown And I swear it wasn't me, it was the crown This magic keeps me alive But it's making me crazy And I need to save you But who's gonna save me? Please forgive me for whatever I do when I don't remember you. Please forgive me for whatever I do when I don't remember you. Da 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 <laughs> Simply must have gotten into my eyes. Anyways, after that embarrassing display of singing, Marceline realized that she can't just leave the Ice King because he's an inconvenience. It's pretty on the nose, but the Ice King represents the mentor and he shows a lot of signs of it. Loss of memory. Well, the Ice King doesn't remember being Simon at all, so check on that one. Poor judgment. He literally kidnaps people. I think poorer judgment is probably not possible. Confusion. Well, the Ice King calls literally everyone he likes Gunther. Gunther, I I'm making a video here. Please, please let Daddy do his thing, okay? Difficulty expressing thoughts. Classic I think. Classic Ice thing. I would. Classic I. Classic I. I classic I. That that that. that. Classic I. Classic Ice thing. Classic Ice. <laughs> Classic Ice King, truly expressing my... <sighs> Classic Ice King. <laughs> Classic Ice King, truly expressing my thoughts is not my strong suit. <laughs> Using unusual words to refer to familiar objects. Actually, that doesn't happen very often. But sometimes, right? Sometimes. Hallucinating or experiencing delusions or paranoia. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Acting impulsively. I think hiring a hitman because he has been grounded seems pretty impulsive to me. By the way, I actually didn't want to kill Finn and Drake. That was not my intention. Not caring about other people's feelings. You know, that's an interesting one because while we throughout the story emphasize with Ice King more and more, the Ice King himself never seems to care that much about others. Even people that he seems to be friends with, he has no qualms of freezing solid or just abusing them for personal gain. For example, in the episode Playdate, we find out that Abaco Daniel and the Ice King become friends and in the episode Friends of Forever, he just freezes him because they had a slight disagreement. In the same episode, he invites the life-given wizard which he's in a secret society with to just bring his household objects to life. The same objects reject him and when he's offered a place among them, he cannot let his self-interest die off and opts out instead to break some of them, get out all of them, and then he throws them out of the window. Sure, the Ice King has some moments of lucidity and for example he saves Finn and Jake during the Elementals arc, but by that point he sees Finn and Jake as his BFFs. Actually, the more time passes, the more lucid the Ice King seems to become, which brings us back to what I was talking about in the beginning of this video with the Sadness, Magic and Madness Trinity. While in the beginning the Ice King seems to have extreme levels of power, over time he gets weaker and weaker and that goes along with the fact that more and more people treat him with empathy. At some point, everybody, or at least the characters we follow, seem to understand that the Ice King is just an old man with dementia and not everything he does is out of malice. Besides the episodes I Remember You and Simon Marcy, in the two episodes Holly Jolly Secrets Part 1 and 2, we actually find more about the Ice King and Simon. It turns out that the Ice King's life is sadder than anybody thought. When he's not out kidnapping princesses, he just leads a normal, boring life, but often he will just lose his strain of thought and go on rants. He will also just cry a lot. Not something I do. I swear. Plus, sub to my channel. Give me money on Patreon. I kinda need that money, Gunther. Anyways, for all the tragedy Simon and the Ice King have to go through, they did kind of have a happy ending of some sort, 
well, as happy as it was possible in the face of total annihilation. When Betty kidnapped Gunther, she actually messed with the crown and caused it to slowly get corrupted, which was causing the Ice King to slowly lose the rest of his marbles. It turns out that inside the crown, all the previous owners have a digital avatar that is not accessible to outsiders, but since the crown was infected by the Betty virus, Marcy and PB are able to get in there. We actually don't know what exactly would have happened if the crown was consumed by the Betty virus, but at the end, part of Betty is still in the virus and she decides to not destroy the crown. The crown heals itself and PB and Marcy can't enter the crown again, which makes Marcy sad since she won't be able to see Simon again. At least for now. So, in a roundabout way, one version of Simon and one version of Betty are now hopefully living happily in the crown for as long as the crown exists. Real life Simon, on the other hand, well, He's kind of fucked. Towards the end of the Adventure Time, PB's relatives that have been trapped by her in their own minds for 800 years come back and PB gears up for war. Gambaldia, that's PB's uncle's kingdom, and the Kangdi kingdom come to a clash but the party gets crashed by Betty who summons Golb, the embodiment of chaos. All hope is lost, but through some magic and power of friendship, Betty is able to lift the curse from Simon and at the same time turning herself into Golb, or absolving Golb or becoming part of Golb. Anyways, she kind of also presumably made him immortal. Kinda. The crown is then picked up by Gunther and he's actually turned into the Ice King who later on actually gets together with library princes, as far as you can trust the outro. And that is where we leave Simon. I think he has a small appearance in Distant Lands, but nothing groundbreaking. Besides PB, Ice King might be my favorite character in Adventure Time. While PB is presented as a good guy in the beginning, it turns out that PB can be quite villainous to achieve her goals. The Ice King, on the other hand, is the exact opposite. In the beginning, the Ice King is presented as a lesser villain, and he generally does fucked up stuff, but it turns out that beneath all the madness, there is a good person. Not only is the person trapped in the Ice King a real hero, who gave up his sanity to save a little girl, the Ice King himself is a good person that does care sometimes about his friends even though he's often consumed by his madness. To be quite honest, Ice King's story ends very unsatisfying, but I think that's part of the journey. A, a tragic villain that turns out to be just the hero of dementia, and even when he wins, he still loses. Hey, no one gets to choose how it happens. The most important thing is that we're here together. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. Give me money on Patreon, cause otherwise I will freeze you to death. Take care, Gunther, and have a nice, wonderful day.